All right, welcome to Andy's Exploits. Uh, it's been about two weeks since I've done an actual uh, discussion uh, in front of the camera, uh, a week and a half. Uh, my family and I just got back from a great uh, seven days down in uh, South Padre Island. Uh, it was the first time in over three years that we had all the kids there back from college and uh, and had a great time and uh, cooked a lot, stayed around on the beach, uh, surfed, not well, uh, boogie boarded, had good sized waves for Texas. Uh, a couple of the days we had a storm in the front coming through so we had three to four maybe five foot waves um, and it was a, a lot of fun. It was fun spending time with uh, Lana uh, and the boys. Uh, my oldest was back for seven days flying in from Bahrain and uh, it was just nice to all kind of be relaxed together. Uh, I did something that I haven't done in a very long time which was set my phone and, and email down and, and not check it. I uh, checked it uh, once on Wednesday for about an hour uh, and then set it down again and, and didn't take any calls and uh, really just uh, tried to unwind and, and relax which is it's pretty difficult for me. So that's over. It's now a Tuesday and had a, a day that went from 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. last night. And uh, today I finished a little bit earlier. Uh, it started early as well. Um, and uh, it was a, it was a, it's, it's good to be back. At the same time, it's a, it's a lot of work. So uh, real quick, just to check in with the vineyard. Uh, so we're closed. I'm still working on the, the putting together the clip of video for uh, the closing in that day. Uh, but my brother and I and my, uh, my parents have actually been on the property quite a bit while uh, my family and I were away enjoying ourselves, uh, have the houses ready for rental. And uh, then we will, uh, we're out there measuring for high fence yesterday and uh, put the final deposit down uh, this afternoon on our first year of vines. So 2017 will consist of an acre of Tempranillo, one acre of Movedra or Movedre, or more verde, uh, you, you pronounce it the way you'd like, I can pronounce it Movedra. Uh, we're doing a half acre to three quarters acre of Arintu, which is a uh, Portuguese white, high acidity, loves the heat, uh, real excited about this, not many people are growing it. In fact, I think there's only two in Texas, uh, and it's not because it's, a, it's a, a vine that may or may not do well. It's more of it's just not something that people know, and uh, and it's not. It's very recently come out of Portugal, and Portugal is very much like uh, Texas, and it produces most of the wine for consumption within its borders, and some of it gets out. They're famous for their ports, obviously, and for Madeira, uh, but less known for some of their other reds and whites. So, anyways, we're excited to have something different, which is a crapshoot. Uh, because you don't know whether people like different or will or will buy different, uh, but you know not everything is for the public. Some of it just has to be for you. So I like doing unusual things, and uh, hopefully this is something that uh, is unusual and we like and has a great payoff. Um, then we're also doing or trying to get our hands on a half acre of another white variety. Um, we've been looking at Trebbiano, Vermiento, Vermentino. Uh, but having trouble with both of those and uh, uh, mostly because the rootstocks are pretty well uh, infected with disease and so it's hard to find certified clean root rootstock or plants. Everything that we've purchased is certified clean rootstock and or green, will be green plotted plants and so uh, we're starting off with what we believe and what is certified as clean vines and that's you know maybe more than half the battle is to find vines that are don't have Pierce's disease or the number of other uh, diseases that the rootstock can carry. And certainly starting with a new, uh, a new vineyard, we don't want to bring in uh, rootstock that's infected and, and uh, puts us off to a bad start. Uh, get two or three or four years into it and have your vines start to die. Most of these diseases you can't treat. They're, you can, you can you could push them back and you can maybe get another year or two out of your vines, but they're, they're pretty hard to treat. So you end up pulling them out of the ground and starting over, which isn't a, which isn't a, a total loss. Uh, but at the age of 46, uh, I figure it'll take me until 76 to become a great, a good winemaker, maybe never achieve great, but uh, the more you push it back, the harder it is to uh, get the practice in. So 
uh, we'd really like to uh, be producing wine in the next three to four years and not just practicing growing grapes. So, uh, and that part's exciting. Uh, we have a tractor that we're either renting, uh, a big D7 to rip the property. Uh, that's putting a spike into the dirt 36 to 42 inches and, and crisscrossing the property at about two foot intervals so that uh, we're breaking up and oxygenating the existing dirt, which hasn't probably been plowed deeper than four to five inches in the last hundred years, uh, probably never. And so we're, 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 we've got a lot of prep work that needs to take place. And uh, uh, we've talked to a couple companies that said they'd come out for about $10,000 and do what we need. And uh, I like to operate equipment. It's a big toy to me and I've got experience. So uh, my brother and I are gonna rent a tractor for about a quarter of the price, have it for a week or two and do the work, that part of the work ourselves. To be truthful, that's the stuff that seems easy to me. As I sat out there yesterday and looked at the uh, the trellis layout and how many posts we were going to need and how many wire lengths of wires we were going to need and all of that, and it was only about three acres. Uh, I was overcome and overwhelmed with the amount of work in front of us, and uh, so I have very quickly today started trying to figure out how I can get others to do some of this. Uh, my brother uh, believes that he can get it all done in about a month, but he has a full-time job, although his work is, is sporadic. So he'll work for 30 or 40 days, then be off for two or three weeks. Uh, my work is less, <clears throat> I have a lot less time, but I can set aside some time. However, a month is, is not something that I can take off. And I haven't discussed it, but I alluded to it on our Padre trip. Uh, I've been trying to get away and do more things as I get older and less able to do the physical activities. Uh, one of my biggest loves when I was younger was surfing and uh, so I've, I've concentrated on uh, surfing again over the last few years and uh, I suck royally and I'm, and I'm not somebody you want to see in the lineup if you're a good surfer uh, but I loved I love it and I love trying and uh, so uh, I've spent a couple weeks this summer on the Texas coast uh, and then flying to Costa Rica here in about three weeks uh, with an old high school buddy of mine uh, to uh, go to Nosara or Nosara, uh, Costa Rica for seven days of just surfing and uh, taking some boogie boards and some flippers with us as well. But uh, he's real excited. Uh, and uh, in fact, he doesn't know it yet, but he's gonna be the first interview for my podcast a, a great friend of mine highly successful uh, lieutenant retired lieutenant colonel in the marine corps uh, former head of the u.s uh, marine expeditionary force probably probably messed that up but we'll get it right and so uh, looking forward to talking to him here in a few weeks uh, as a relaxed few beers a uh, good day of surfing in us and uh, he's got stories and, and ideas on the world that i, I always find fascinating and We've known each other since we were 11 or 12 years old. So uh, real excited about that. Uh, was in Costa Rica earlier this year. Uh, didn't get to surf, got to play in the waves. And uh, since then I've been waiting to get back. Didn't really think I'd get back this year, uh, but the opportunity presented itself. And so uh, in the past, I would have said, you know what, I've already been on a number of vacations this year. I've got this vineyard thing going. I've got a full-time job. I've, I don't know that I've discussed it, but I'm active in about four different companies. And so I would have made a, a number of valid excuses why I can't do it. But that, that phrase, you only live once and you can't buy time, uh, that, that phrase has been repeated to me a number of times over and over over the last few years by a number of people, a few of my mentors, and uh, it rings true. And uh, so uh, I don't want to regret not doing things uh, when I'm older. Older to me, you know, heck, every decade you lose uh, another ounce of physical uh, ability and fitness. Uh, surfing, for instance, uh, standing up's not the hard part. It's getting, getting back out after you stand up and it's getting out to the back of the out, outside of the lineup uh, when you're starting and so you know, right now I have the ability to paddle in, in, in and out just a few number of times, less than 10. I work out three or four days a week. I run. Uh, I'm in pretty good, pretty good shape, pretty good health. Uh, don't have a lot of extra body fat, eat healthy. And yeah, there's guys that are a lot stronger that are older than me. 
but my my curve, my uh, bell curve, I'm definitely on this part of it. And maybe next year I'll be happy and get on here and say, hey, I was wrong, I've gotten stronger and I can paddle all day. But when you only do that kind of stuff a few weeks a year and, and, and intermittently, it's a, it's a hard deal. And, and although you can't see it really closely on here, I'm starting to get really damn gray in my beard, which is kind of bullshit because I wasn't even able to grow a beard until this year. Still some big patches. So the first year I hit puberty and I'm able to grow a beard, it turns gray. So, you know, oh well. At least I have a full head of hair. So, uh, anyways, I digress. So doing these things, taking advantage of, of the time and, and, and gaining experiences is something that is important and uh, it's something I'm trying to give my children as well. So I'm, I'm really stoked and excited to see my boys getting older. And so this year we've gone skiing, we're going skiing again for Thanksgiving. Uh, in fact, I'm getting a lot of crap from people I work with because I said, I think this is gonna be five or six weeks of trips and vacations you've taken this year. And I say, yes, that's the, that's the case, but I haven't taken uh, more than a week or two of uh, vacation in the last few years at any one time. Uh, so uh, the, the kids that, or the people that lost out on that more than myself were my family. Uh, and so uh, I'm trying to, uh, I wouldn't say make up, but, but give them the experiences that my parents gave me when I was young. And, uh, and I've done less of a good job of doing that than my parents did with me. And my parents had very few of the same interests, uh, but they were avid campers and they love the outdoors and they love the national parks and they drive a day out of the way to go look at those things and show, show their kids those things. And at the time, uh, like many kids, you didn't appreciate it as much as you do looking back now. And uh, you know, I've been to every national park almost and a bazillion state parks and a bazillion Sunday drives uh, and hikes through forests and mountains and uh, walks along the Salton Sea, which I don't even think exists much anymore. Uh, and, and just out of the way places that, that my parents uh, had the, the uh, desire to go see. And uh, so anyways, I noticed now that we're getting to 12 and a half minutes, I'm uh, super excited to talk about more of the stuff coming up. And uh, although I'm producing some goofy vlogs with family and friends in them, uh, in the vineyard, the real purpose of this was to share more about myself and what I do and what I try to do on a daily basis. Not excellence, not high performance, although I, I believe I do a lot of things excellent and I believe I'm a high performer, but those are self-given labels. I think everybody probably thinks they're, they're, they're really good and they do a good job. Uh, so we'll let, we'll let uh, time determine that. But anyways, thank you. Uh, appreciate you listening. And uh, Andy's exploits is over.